Okay, enough messing around with paper. Time to talk about fabric. Um, this is a fabric I bought. It's black um, because I want to make trousers that I'm going to be wearing often. Um, it's got 45% uh, wool in it, which uh, makes it it's quite a nice fabric, to be honest. Um, if this is the first time you're making pants, you might want to go for something cheap. Um, this is this is about 25 euro a meter. You're going to need two meters to make trousers. I mean, I do because I'm tall. You might have enough with a bit less. So that's 50 euros just for the fabric. So um, if you're not sure how it's going to end up, you might want to go for something cheaper. Or you can, of course, make a muslin. Um, but this is the fabric I have. I also got this, um, which is the lining, which is cheap polyester really. Um, just to the lining, it feels really soft and it's going to be really nice to wear. I'm also going to be doing the pockets in this lining. Some people, um, including me actually, sometimes do pockets in yeah, the third type of fabric. But um, I don't really have anything in my stash and I don't really want to buy um, fabric just for that, so I'm just going to be using the lining, it's going to be fine. Um, what's important uh, is you want to wash your fabric um, before you make your trousers. Basically you want to do to it what you would do to your finished trousers. So I washed this on a wool program on my washing machine with some washing liquid. Don't put it in the tumble dryer, it's got wool in it, you're going to regret that. So just let it dry and then I iron it basically giving it the treatment that it will be getting later, so that it's pre-shrunk. So any shrinking that it wants to do by now, it should have done. And so we're ready to start cutting it up for our pattern. Okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to spread out your fabric neatly on a table or some other large surface. Um, however, you're going to have to fold it double. Um, as you can see here, the fabric is actually folded double. And you should make sure that it is on grain. What does that mean? Is that the fabric is nice and straight and that it doesn't um, run diagonal. Now, if you align the sides properly, as I've done here, and then just fold it double, then you shouldn't have any problems. One thing to take into account is when you buy a fabric, it's gonna be with the good side out. Now, not all fabrics, um, it's not always that easy to tell what is the good side. Here it is actually easy because you can see that you have this text here, right? That is um, readable only from the good side. And if I bought it, when I bought it, it was like this. I, a, I washed it, I ironed it, and then I flipped it inside out. So now when it's folded double, this is towards the inside. We keep the good side of the fabric on the inside because we're going to be drawing marks on this side and we want to make sure that that never shows on the good side. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to be laying out the pattern pieces and marking them on the fabric before cutting them out. Okay, before we start cutting up our precious fabric, let's, um, let's briefly walk you through what these different icons mean on the pattern. Standard, what you will see the most is these scissor icons, you know, just to tell you you have to cut it out. Um, it says you need to cut it twice and then you have this like double, um, this icon of two layers of fabric one gray looking, one white looking. What that actually means is you have to cut two and you cut it as mirror images of themselves. So basically the way we have the fabric lined out now, it is folded double. What that means if you if you put this down, you mark it and you cut through both layers, that's perfect. That's what this icon means. Another important thing is this gray line with the double arrow. That is the grain line. You want to make sure that that line aligns perfectly with the grain line. Remember, the grain line is a line that's parallel with the side of your fabric and that, you know, runs along the threads of the weave. Um, so you want to make sure that you don't put it like this, you don't put it like this, you don't put it like this. No, you put it straight like that. Now, we have some other varieties too. Here it says to cut this part four times. Once again, it's got, you know, on a folded fabric, but it has that letter F and that's because you need to cut this out of facing material. Now facing is um, material that you're going to use on the inside of your garment but that's still visible from the outside. What do I mean by that is facing is for example if you have welt pockets on the back of your 
classic trousers. When you open the pockets, the fabric that you see inside, when you see in the pocket, that is facing. Facing is also, for example, if you have a jacket and you open the collar, what's on the inside, that's facing. So it is a fabric that's used on the inside, but it's still going to be visible from time to time. So you can either use the same fabric as using on the outside, or you can use some flashy color if you'd like that. That's possible. Here's yet another one. I'm not sure if this is clear on video, but this icon actually has like a little hash, like a little roster. Um, that means you need to cut this for out of interfacing fabric. We'll talk about interfacing later, but it's a specific type. We're going to be using fusible interfacing. Here, cut twice and then just a square. That means don't cut it twice folded, but cut it twice like this. So don't cut through both layers because then we'll have two mirror images of, of, uh, of, of uh, this piece. No, actually cut one like that and cut another one like that on a single layer of fabric. That's what we're going to need. And then finally, cut four of these and then there's a letter I, which means inside. This is the pocket bag and this fabric will never be visible from the outside. So for this, we are going to be using um, the same bag, uh, the same fabric here as we used for the lining, but you could use whatever you want. It will never be visible from the outside. This is really like a fabric that's only going to be used on the inside of the garment. Now I told you before about the grain line that is marked on the pattern here with the arrow uh, it's all the way down there and how it's really important to align your fabric together with your pattern piece so that the grain line is aligned with the side of the fabric. Now for these small pattern parts that we have here that may be easy but for a big pattern part like that it kind of becomes difficult like how do you align um, the grain line properly. Now the way I do that is this. This is the other leg part and as you see I folded it exactly on the grain line along the, the length of the pattern piece. What I do then is I align just this side where it's folded perfectly on grain and then I just shift these weights and then to this side here, which is difficult to do with one hand while I'm holding the camera, just put those weights there and then later on I fold open this pattern piece and then I'm absolutely sure that it's going to be on grain. So that's one way to do it. Okay, for the smaller pattern pieces, an easy way to put them on grain is I've put my ruler on the fabric and I've aligned it neatly with the grain and then once I've got that in place I can just move this pattern piece to make sure that it's nicely in grain, on grain and just put a weight on it and we're good to go. Okay, as you can see I've got a first batch of pattern pieces laid out on my fabric and I've got weights on them to keep them down. Um, tailors have these really nice looking cast iron weights. I have no such nice things, but I do have plates um, and they work just as fine. I got part A right here, which is the front block. I got part B there, which is the back block. I got part um, C there, which is the side piece. Right there. Let's see, it's part C side piece. Here I've got um, part G, which is the uh, pocket facing. And then I've also got um, this part here, the waistband, which is part F. Um, however, one important remark about this waistband is actually too long to fit on our um, fabric folded. As you can see, we're um, putting it this way. Um, you may have a natural tendency to put the waistband in the length of the fabric because it's such a long and narrow piece. However, don't do that. And you'll also see that the grain line on it points that way because um, it will be put on your trousers this way, so you want it to be oriented the same way um, as the rest. Um, what I actually did, because it's such a long piece and it's symmetrical, I folded it in half, so this is the fabric piece folded in half, and I put it here on the fold of the fabric. So we will just cut it out like that, and then when it folds open, it will actually be, um, it will be perfect. Now, I may have been able to save some fabric if I had turn this around 180 degrees, have the white part down there, then I could have eased it up a bit further there. However, the way the light reflects of the fabric may be different if you hold it upside down. So for the best result, it's really best to lay it out like this. Um, this table is two meters, so if you can see two meters is plenty to make your trousers and I'm six foot six or one meter 98, so um, you may be taller than me, but probably not much.